I'm Jennifer Swartha from Jagged Edge Acrylics. You're watching Art Creation TV. Today we're going to be concentrating on contrast in art. The demonstration today will be for spray paint art. Please keep in mind that since we're in the outdoor studio today and it is 40 degrees in Michigan, we may get some splatters and some strings with our cans and that's okay. We'll learn to work with those too. So it should be fun. Continue to watch. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we want to remember when we're doing spray paint art is that less paint is more. So we'll lay down just a little bit of paint. We want lighter paint with darker paint. You'll also possibly want some white in there, which is a good neutral color, a neutral tone. We're going to want to add some, some lighter colors, some lighter tones over in this area with some darker tones over in here before we place down our planet stencil. So now we have our magazine piece and we're going to create whatever kind of texture you want. If you get a clear texture when you use less paint you have some of that poster board popping through and you'll see what I mean in just a second. And we need to decide what color our background is going to be. If we're going to have a solar system it can be any number of colors. It doesn't have to be solid black. So if we have a light source over here, we're not going to want solid black over here. So remember, we have our light planet over here. We don't want to mix light with light because that will completely void the contrast that we're going for. But we don't want to make it too dark. So balance is the key here. Where we put light, we put something darker. Where we put dark, we put something lighter. Now, another helpful tip to get contrast over here where the planet's going to pop right out is to add a small light source over here. These rays are going to appear like they're popping out behind this planet, and that is going to lift the planet right out of the painting. It's going to get darker as we come away from our light source, which I'm going to put right here. And for today's sake, that light source is just going to be a small star. Here is one of those drips that I was talking about where when it gets cold weather you're going to get drips and those drips are just going to have to be worked with there's nothing that you can do about them if you're painting in under 50 degrees as we move away from the light source it's going to get darker so it is going to get darker in these back corners unless you have another light source. So now we have created contrast between the planet and the sky. Now I don't like this area. I don't think it's bright enough. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to lighten this. Dark against light, light against dark. Do you see the difference that that made with the contrast and bringing that, helping to bring that out? We're going to go ahead and I'm just going to remove this star here. We're going to create a landscape. And I want to show you that the same thing can be done with landscape. Where there's light, there's dark. Where there's dark, there's light. That's the basic rule for anything with contrast. So, you pick a lighter color and a darker color. Uh, for this I'm going to use purple and green. This is a lime green. I'm going to put the lime green up top of the purple on this top edge here. The purple is going to remain on the bottom because that's still in shadow and I'm going to cover this with black. Now here is where you create the depth in your painting as well as the high contrast. You take your magazine page and you lay it down. You're going to run your nails right 
along the top and you're going to pull it up. This is how we're going to create terrain. There's no need to change the piece of paper. It's going to transfer over. If you don't like an area, take that same sheet of paper and go over it. You're picking up paint here. Now this still looks pretty flat. You want to add another layer. In order to do that, we're going to come back in and we're going to lay down another layer of black. We could lay down our lighter colors too if we wanted to. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a mist. Normally, you would use white to create a mist. But the effect that this creates is that things that are further in the distance are going to be lighter than what's up front. So you're creating this mist here. Not only does it create a layer of fog down here, but it pushes all of this back. So that when we add our another layer of black on top of this, we get a crisper, bolder foreground than what we would have had before. Now see, what I'm doing here, I'm doing on purpose. I am laying down too much paint. I want to show you what not to do and how to fix it. Here, come in here. And all I'm doing right now is pushing around paint. It's okay, but it's not bold. It doesn't do the contrast that we want. So if the newspaper removed the paint the first time around, get a clean sheet and remove it again. Continue to remove the paint until you have a contrast that you're happy with. Now I'm starting to get those bright highlights that I'm looking for. I'm still not getting them over here and the paint is almost dry. Go in and add just a little bit more black. Now I could add clear here but I'm still not going to get the contrast that I want because the colors aren't dark enough under there to give me the light that I want. You see what I did there? Where you want light, make it darker. Now a lot of artists when trying to save time will use the palette knife. But I want to show you, you don't want to do this. What this does is it's removing paint all the way down to the white. Now you've taken away all source of value. Rocks aren't white. You can fix this by coming through with your finger and smudging. Now you've added highlights in certain areas. Lighter pressure will get you a better result if you are going to use the palette knife. Use the full side of it so that you get that gradation. Where it's too white, whiter than what would naturally be found in nature, you want to come back in and you want to remove that. Like I said, that's if you're going to use your palette knife, if you're going to scratch your highlights. Another way to create layers in your spray paint art is to put something of interest in the foreground. In this case, I'm going to scratch a tree. Now here's this spot of black right here. I don't know how it got there. I'm sure looking at the film I'll be able to see. But we're going to go right over top of this. Once again, we're going to fix a mistake and turn it into something different. You take the side of the knife and quite hard pressure. You want very hard pressure in order to move the paint and remove it all the way down. Now, in this instance, you do want to push hard on the edge because you want that bright white outline to create this shadow along this back side. Keep in mind, your light source is coming from the right here, so you definitely want to keep that going. Come back through. Don't press so hard on the back side. You don't want to press hard on the back side or you're going to lose all the light highlights on this front side. In order to go through the paint all the way down, you're going to make, need to make sure that your paint is very wet. Allow your knife to bounce off the paper. Trees are not flat. Trees are not straight. If you start making tree branches that look like this, you're not going to be happy with the result. You want them to bounce. You want them to fluctuate so that no two branches are the same. Nature is not predictable. doing here is we are creating interest. We are creating layers. 
and in creating layers we are creating depth. If your light source was coming from the left, then you would turn your knife around the other way. Ours is coming from the right. Okay, so now that I have the tree done, we want another layer. Why? Because we want to create depth. Clear over here, we can re-wet this paint. And we can come in if we wanted to, and we can get some trees here. Smaller trees are going to show us distance with less detail. As simple as that, you've created another layer in the background. Now what about a layer in the foreground? How are we going to do that? Easy. We are going to push this back even further. We're going to create another layer up here, and this layer is going to be a foreground of grass or, or bushes. In order to do that, we want to put some dark back in here. We can't have light without dark. We can't have darks without light. It just doesn't happen. Creating contrast, creating depth. It's all about lights and darks. I can't say that enough. So off to the side, I'm going to get just a small little sponge and some yellow. Yellow and black are going to make a greenish tone. I'm just going to dip right into the yellow, and I'm going to come through here and just blob. There is no pattern, no rhyme, no rhythm. that last because we're picking up paint on our sponge you're going to do this behind the tree last our shadow is going to cast this way so you're going to add some darks back in here now how do we create even another layer to this easy we leave some of this black in here if you don't have enough add some more I'm going to add yellow, and this time I'm going to add white to my yellow. Use the same sponge. I'm going to dip into both the white and the yellow at the same time. And I'm going to create just another small layer of interest. Now, How about more contrast? How about more depth, more layers? we can add some rocks. We can do that by using our palette knife. And all you're going to do is create a half moon, just like this. The light's going to hit the top of the rock, it's going to leave the back in shadow. Now if you want to create even more depth here, we can absolutely do that by going back and adding our darks. Just at the base of this. Now I'm going to leave what I've done here because it pushes those rocks into the background and I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to add some grass. Some twigs here and there. And we have a finished painting. Don't forget to sign your work. Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you had fun. I know I did. If you like what you saw today, leave a comment, like, and subscribe for more videos like this one. I upload a new video every week, so stay tuned for more art awesomeness. I'm Jennifer Swarthout. Have a great day.